Good evening and thank you for joining us. We begin with the investigation into that mass killing in Nova Scotia. It's been one week since a lone gunman began a 13-hour murder spree that claimed the lives of 22 people. Police believe many of the victims were targeted, while others were randomly chosen. Their loved ones want answers and question whether a better warning system could have saved lives. Tonight, the RCMP and the province's independent watchdog are investigating. But as Elizabeth McSheffrey reports, there are growing calls for a public inquiry. RCMP have provided a timeline of Nova Scotia's mass shooting, but so many questions remain unanswered. It's complicated by the fact that the killer isn't here to address them himself. We need to think about the extent to which his motives uh, you know, can be uh, um, delineated. We need to think about what warning signs there may have been. The pressure is on Nova Scotia's premier to launch a public inquiry into Canada's worst mass shooting. I've asked the attorney general uh, to look at uh, what are the possibilities uh, as he works with uh, his national partners. An inquiry could be ordered in house by the Nova Scotia government or the federal government could order one as it did in the 2014 shooting in Moncton, New Brunswick, which left three RCMP officers dead and two injured. Were the RCMP in Nova Scotia properly equipped equipped, trained and supervised. If not, it's possible there could be an investigation and possible charges. I mean, it's just another possibility. Rhonda McClellan, who fears her friend was killed in the spree, says answers would help her heal. It's good to know, so you cannot move forward, in my opinion, till you know the truth. The house of Joanne Thomas and husband John Zoll was set on fire during the shooting. The couple has not been heard from since. An inquiry can't technically assign blame, but it would make recommendations. And there will never be a trial for Gabriel Wartman because he was killed. For now, the investigation into this horrific chapter in Nova Scotia's history is in the hands of the province's police watchdog. Elizabeth McSheffrey, Global News, Halifax.